What's up guys, I'm Tash and this is Tash Tech and today we did a, a video about making some studio lights for you guys that you can all make if you want to do videos at home. Uh, you need a good lighting setup if you want to make videos at home. Basically what happened was we have a, a set of Godox LED studio lights and uh, we had an issue with both of them for some reason, specifically to do with the power supplies and they had to go back in for repairs and, and warrant, uh, under warranty what have you and they were going to keep them and we couldn't not shoot videos because we had a whole bunch of stuff coming in. So we, we decided this is a perfect opportunity to make the studio lights that we wanted to always put in, basically build into our studio um, so that we can get rid of the Godox lights that had the tripod stands on there and free up some more space in our little studio here. And this is it. Basically all I did was we took three 85 watt uh, incandescent fluorescent lights and we put them onto a bar with the base here and uh, I put a switch on here and a, and a power point as well so that we can plug stuff in if we need to because there's only two power points and the plug points in our studio here so we just added more into that. I don't like extension cords running all over the place. And it gives us more than enough light. If you want to, you can add more lights in between as well. They're very, it's a very uh, cost effective solution and it works. And check this out. Boom. So we didn't put a potentiometer or a voltmeter on them so that you can control the brightness because that when you do that you actually you, you tend to have a flicker on your lights. That's what yeah that's what happens because when you put a potentiometer on a voltage source, it to a human eye it looks like it's dimmed. That's because it sends the volts in packets and it stops it. And the more you turn it up, the bigger the gaps are between the volts that the volts that is sending it. A camera will pick that up and it'll look like a flicker. So we didn't put that on here. Instead, I just put four lights. Each one have their own switch and it works really well. This is how we did it. You guys remember these buckets and we used the uh, classic grip seal, which is the same color as my cabinets. Say hello, Liz. This is Liz and she's painting the, or she's staining the piece of wood right now. Um, we used, uh, it's a cherry, Cherry stain, so we just she's just staining the top section first. I mean, you don't have to stain it, but we wanted to because it matched the rest of the cabinets, and I like this this deep cherry color that we get from this. So you just uh, stain the top, and we turn it on at the side, and stain the sides. You don't have to stain the back because we have white walls, and the stainer does leave a few marks here and there if you do want to stain the back. Just bear that in mind. We had to um, cut a bit of the uh, the the top of the the light mount off for the E27 mount because it was just too much recessed in there. That was the actual mounting bracket. So I had to cut a bit of this plastic off because you can see I got the GP474 bulb and it just does not even contact that because of the extra plastic on top here. So I just sliced the extra plastic off. We're going to be using this inside so it doesn't need to be outside, it doesn't need to be waterproof. So it's fine. So we pulled off the little o-ring here and we need it. I have a metal cutoff saw here, obviously. Um, you don't have to, this is way overkill for what I'm using it for. You could have just used a hacksaw. Uh, it would work perfectly fine. I just like to use it because I have it. Then I ground it down a little bit because I wasn't getting the angle. So it's a 1.8 meter long uh, piece of strip of wood and uh, I have four lights, so I've separated it on 45 centimeters each light, so I've got from here to here 45 centimeters and so on. I'm leaving a gap on this side and that one's going right to the end because over here we're going to have a plug point so we can plug in for equipment and the switching control for all four of the lights. Now I'm just going to screw them in. Each one of them takes three screws. I'm going to make sure to face the, the wires out in one direction on one side of the wood so that I'm going to run my, my cables on this side. Here I am hand screwing it. Don't ask me why. Then Liz was like, why didn't you use the drill? Fetch the drill now. I'm screwing it with the drill. Liz is helping me. Measure again, place again, make sure the wires in one direction, and then put the three screws in. Now 
is a close-up shot of how you do it. And you can see my draw ran out of power here. I don't mind using a bit of brute force. Basically, I just aligned it, make sure that the holes were aligned. You just kind of went from one part to the other, to the switches. Then I can do the holes in here to actually put the screws into mount to the back legs. shot now apparently Strung it up and spray painted. You don't have to spray paint it again. I liked the black, which goes well in my studio, so that's what we did. So I had a bunch of wire lying around and instead of buying single red and black copper cable, I decided to just strip it out of the wire I already had. It's new wire, it's new cable, uh, which I bought for a project that had extra. So I would use the knife and I just stripped the cable out of it. I'm not gonna go buy extra. This whole whole plan was to you know keep the bolt as cheap as possible. And the, the wire works pretty well. Then I just screwed it in uh, I put chocolate blocks on each one and uh, screwed a common ground cable through each one um, in, in the series. Then I came back to here and put in the common ground with the black cable in each one and a chocolate block. Uh, stripping the wires. I'm trying to keep the connections as close to the, the device as possible. I don't want the wires hanging out too far. We don't want a very sloppy wire job. Although I do, I, I did think about cable management before this and I prefer to see a bit of wires. I like it. It's a bit rustic and uh, yeah, that's the way I wanted it. I could have put a conduit on the top of it, but I didn't want to. I'm just screwing the uh, boxes onto the piece of wood now. And I'm going to go the hole in the top for the wire to go through the switch plate. By the way, earlier I said there was three lights. There's actually four. I'm not too sure where my maths was. Make a big decent hole in there because you're going to have a couple of wires coming out. So that's a common black and the brown that's in there. Now we're going to start wiring the red. Each light socket itself needs its own red because each one has a separate switch. So I had to then take my cable and strip out a bunch of red again. 
you know, you don't have to strip out red, I just wanted to keep it red and black, so you can use the black as well, it's not, not red because it's a different colour. So yeah, just wire each one, fed it through the block, to the, the switch plate, there's another one, stripped the wire out of it, connected it and ran it through the, the switch plate again. Just a bit of the pricing of this build, those uh, light fittings cost about 58 rand each from Builder's Warehouse. And the, uh, the, the switch plate about, I think between 10 and 20 rand each as well. The switch itself was about, the switch of the four switches was about 50 rand. And uh, the cable I had, the, the, the piece of wood was 40 rand, it's 1.8 meter long. And the light bulbs were the most expensive thing and they were about 380 rand each. But very good 85 watt lights, which gives you about 5,600 lumens. So I'm just running the cable in here. I'm using black because you, you shouldn't be using black if you want to keep the color scheme right. But we've got the, the red, the, the, the live coming in, the positive coming in there. It's not decent to call it live. So live coming in, and then I've registered to each switch, as you can see, so that each switch has a live incoming. And then that longer red piece will connect to the plug point. And then each cable here will be connected to a switch. And then that black cable on the common ground will go directly into the incoming cable, the incoming power, the ground. And just go down through, I'm snipping them off, making sure they're not too long, because it's lovely to be tackled in there. And boom, there's one. Gotta keep your orientation right here as well. Now I'm going to wire the plug points to get two wires coming in here. I'm putting an extension port which I just cut off the end and putting it in the plug point because I'm just going to connect the plug point to the studio. So we've got the common going to come in and I'm just going to go to the other two rings. I'm going to screw this in. I'm going to put a plug in at the end of the cable. This is where I had problems because they don't make plugs these days like they used to, right? Eh? Oh, this, this cable, and you can see, I, it's, sorry, it's not an extension port, I actually purchased the stripper cable. It's a little bit thicker than your average extension port, so I was having trouble getting it into a plug. Um, obviously, you know, we had to uh, use a bit of solder. To, I just wanted to use a solder because I didn't want it short, and I didn't want to short these lights out, so I, I made sure it was very fixed in there. Just soldered the wires into the plug, then, into the plug. Busy closing up the plug now. I have to strip a bit more plastic or rub away from it. This is taking longer than it should. Come on, Tash. These people know how to put a plug in. Oh, there you go. Put it in. Screw it up, guys. That's pretty bright. 
Wait, 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 not yet. Okay, switch that one off. Second one. Third one. Fourth one. And then go down and smile. Just line it up sort of centralized. Uh, let's want the light coming in from the from behind the camera, which is the best place to have it coming in. Centralize a little bit in the room. Um, get the height right. You just want it just above your cameraman, or your camera woman in this case. Chipmunks. That's your finished product. Thanks for watching, guys. Now you know how to make your own light kits. If you want to, go ahead and make it. Send us your, uh, a couple pictures or whatever if you want. If you have made it, and I'll put it up on a, on a video we do, a follow-up video maybe. And uh, yeah, check me out on the social links there here or in the description below. Uh, leave a comment for me. And maybe there's something you can tell me that I could have done better with these lights. That's cool. I like to hear from you guys. Check me out on Facebook. And yeah, check out my Instagram. Thanks for watching. See you next time.